It's the Beat Break Morning Show with Sean Garvey and the crew. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Beat Break Morning Show, the Beat Break Podcast. You're now rocking with the best. I go by the name of Sean Garvey. Shout out to my homie DJ Rollum, who is out on location doing his DJing thing this morning, ladies and gentlemen. So he would not be with us on this very special bonus episode of the Beat Break Morning Show. That's right, folks. I said the bonus episode. We just got done wrapping up our season finale uh, for this season. But we decided to come back by popular demand because we got a lot of stuff to cover. Make sure you follow us everywhere on social media at Beat Break Radio, Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram at Beat Break Radio. We are simulcasting on Thinking Out Loud Network, thinkingoutloudnetwork.com. And you can check us out 24-7 on beatbreakradiofm.com. And don't forget to download the podcast FM app to your smartphone and other mobile devices, including your iPhone and Android. So make sure you get that today. Plus, ladies and gentlemen, we got a special, special major announcement that we are going to make towards the end of the program. So stay tuned for that. we got a very special guest joining with us right here on the Beat Break Morning Show. It is going to be epic and it is going to be exclusive, ladies and gentlemen. But before I go any, any further, you know, I got to shout out my homegirl. She is back, ladies and gentlemen. Star Kells is in the building. Star, what's good? Good morning. Good morning. What's going on? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic and lovely as usual. Awesome. I love to hear that. How how has your week been? How's your weekend been? My weekend was relaxing. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of rest in for the first time in a long time. Yeah, because you you are more busier than I am. I know. <laughs> so I got to relax. So I'm happy. I feel I don't I look like I got some rest. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> well hey you here with us so that's all that matters so appreciate you for uh coming on you've been on um the last few episodes and you know we gotta definitely definitely piggyback on uh the last two episodes that we did with dj Rollum. so we're going to get into that in just a few moments but ladies and gentlemen i want to bring this gentleman on uh this is a very first for us uh star because we never done a show like this ever before where we get to talk to a guest who is the CEO of a major company. And I'm saying that I'm, I'm speaking into existence in advance because this is definitely going to be like a major 500, Fortune 500 company in the making. Uh, you know, and, and for, so for those that have been following us or have been listening to the past few episodes of the Beat Break Morning Show throughout the course of our term, we have had dating shows on the morning show. Uh, star we had hooked up a few people here and there some were successful and some were not successful but this gentleman that we're going to bring on uh, he is the ceo of couple and it's couple.com that's couple.com is a new virtual online speed dating and here to talk more about it is the ceo ryan bestwick ladies and gentlemen good day ryan how you doing uh, good morning, Sean. I'm doing well. How are you? Hey, I'm good, man. I'm good. I- I'm excited. I'm ready to dive right into uh, this couple thing, uh, couple.com. Uh, and uh, this is the first time, this is a first exclusive that we are ever doing right here on the Beat Break Morning Show. Like no other radio station or other radio show is doing this interview. So we are just very happy and fortunate that you took time out of your busy schedule to speak to us. Yeah, no, no. Happy to be here. This is uh, this is a first for me. We've been flying under the radar up until this point. So, yeah, you know, the, the first media we're doing is your show. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, we are definitely honored on behalf of the Beat Break Morning Show. We're definitely honored to have you on, man. So let's get right into it. Like, what what is couple? I mean, the name is very self-explanatory. When people hear the word couple, they think of two people in a relationship. But what is what is couple.com and how did it all come about? Yeah, yeah. So we're an online speed dating platform. Uh, software is still very much in beta, 
Uh, you know, we're, we're in beta now in two cities. We're in Atlanta. We're also in Toronto. Nice. Uh, we, we got started in June of 2020. So it's been just over a year now. So at that time, you can remember, we were three months in uh, to the COVID lockdowns. And it became clear to us that there needs to be a way for people to connect and make friends and find romantic partners. Uh, and then, you know, you just seen video exploding online. So we put one and one together and we said virtual speed dating. Uh, so I put together a, a seriously talented team of software engineers and uh, we've been plugging away at this software and just the feedback that we've been getting from, you know, our users in Atlanta has just been, you know, it's been driving us forward. We're excited about it. Awesome. Awesome. You know, it's so funny that you talked about the COVID-19 pandemic for just only a few moments because, uh, you know, coming out of the pandemic, I mean, we still are in a pandemic, but not like it was last year. The pandemic have put a dapper in people's dating, how they go about dating and relationships. Uh, and, and shout outs to those that have survived throughout the pandemic by just sticking, uh, you know, by just staying together and sticking it out through all the trials and tribulations that came out of the pandemic. Uh, but there are people who have came out of a relationship during the pandemic. They couldn't stand one another. You know how the scenario. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and now they're back into the market and people are going on these dating apps. And, and me and you, Ryan, we talked about it offline, about the dating apps that are out there, the Tinder and the Bumble and the Hinge and all of them. I mean, mm -hmm. there's more than just those three major uh, dating apps. But for couple.com, what sets it apart from the other dating outlets that are out there? Yeah, so I mean, if, if you're looking for a romantic partner and you're using traditional online dating like Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, uh, you're subscribing to two or three and you're spending 11 hours per week on average that's swiping through profiles, you're engaging in online chats, you're trying to get to that first date. You know, mm -hmm. when you do get to the first date, it's awkward, pressure filled. You're trying to live up to that persona that you built up of yourself before the date. Um, so, and it's all with like a really low success rate. Only 19% find a relationship within the first year using traditional online dating. Um, so with couple, you, we cut through all of that. There's no swiping through profiles. There's no online chat. You just show up at the event. Uh, we're gonna pair you up on 15 to 20 dates. And right away, you're in a real live conversation with somebody and you, and you start to understand pretty, pretty quickly whether or not that's somebody you're vibing with. And if you are, you, can, you, you mutually connect and, and you get together offline. Yeah, I remember once upon a time, I participated in a uh, speed dating event. This was a couple of years ago, and it was in person. It was face to face. And yeah. so fast forward now, it's online. You don't have to go out or you don't have to do all this extra stuff going out and seeing people face to face in person at a venue or an event. You can do it from the comfort of your own home. Totally. Yeah. Now this, you know, you still want to treat it like you're going out to an event. You want to get excited about it, but, but there's no, you know, no taking an Uber anywhere. Uh, you know, no, no paying for drinks. You're just at home. You're doing it in the comfort of your home. What? what yeah. Yeah. No paying for drinks. Well, the ladies, the ladies to get their drinks free. <laughs> <laughs> the women get their drinks free. The men, we have to pay. So, <laughs> so I, I think it should be, Hey men, you all don't have to worry about paying the ladies the drinks. <laughs> they can drink their own. They can drink their own drink at their own home, at their own crib. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So I, I got to ask you um, because right now you mentioned that you are on the process of uh, doing the beta beta for uh, couple.com. and so um, right now because I did, did some digging and some exploring into the platform lately. And I noticed that the two places that you are focusing on right now during this process is Toronto, Toronto, Canada, and yeah. of course, our hometown, the ATL, Atlanta. That's right. Um, and and I, I'm, so, I'm so glad that we got you on because we're actually gonna do a topic about dating in Atlanta in just a few moments. But why were places like Atlanta and Toronto chosen to bring an early introduction of couple couple to the to its residents. Yes, I mean when when we're doing beta, like early on, really what we want to do is just learn from users. 
Uh, so it's really just a learning game for these first few months as we develop our product. And I tell you, a year later, we've learned a lot compared to where we thought the product would be or where we were going with it. Um, so we wanted to, to find cities with good diversity, with young populations and cities where we thought we could make a difference. So if you look at Atlanta, uh, seventh largest city in the U.S., so it's got the population we're looking for. Uh, population there has grown 25% in the last decade. 20% uh, of Atlanta's population is between the age of 25 and 34. And with online dating, that's really the, the, the biggest segment you're going after. So that was huge for Atlanta. In this stat, you're probably not going to believe, but 70% of Atlanta's population is single, according to the census. You know, so this is, this is an area where we thought we could come in and make a difference. Wait, wait, say, Ryan, say that one more time. Say the stats one more time for Atlanta. I want everybody to hear this. 70% of Atlanta's population is single. Woo! 70%. He didn't say seven. <laughs> he said 70% of people that are single. Wow. Wow. Woo! Um, I got some more questions, but I'm going to swing it over to Star. Star, do you have questions? Once again, for those who are just tuning in to the Beat Break Morning Show, we have Ryan Beswick, the CEO of Couple, uh, joining with us to talk about his new virtual online speed dating. Uh, Star, do you have a question or two for Ryan? Well, I just want to put it out there that I am single and ready to mingle. So thank you, Ryan. Awesome. And then also, I do have a question. My question is, you said that it was 70% singles out here in Atlanta? That's what we saw, yeah. So did you guys do I, uh, maybe a statistic on how many of the 70% are women? No, I don't have it broken down by gender. But I, for, you know, from what we see, you know, just by looking at our events, we have in, in Toronto, Atlanta and Toronto are like are total opposites. So in Toronto, we'll have like, 40 or 50 guys that are waiting in this mingle room for their date because we have more men than women in Atlanta, the opposite. I think it's a lot more single women in Atlanta. We have like, you know, a surplus of women at our events and they're hanging out, they're chatting with the host while they're waiting for that next date to start. Uh, so I think, I think there's, there's lots of women guys out in Atlanta who are single. Well, I, I like the fact that you just said something that I was technically not aware of and it kind of like, postpones another kind of question for me. I did not know that the rate of men in Toronto was higher than women. It is, yeah. Yeah, they, there's a, a lot of people who come into Toronto. They come in to, to, there's a lot of engineers in Toronto, software engineers, they come in uh, to the city and, uh, but we don't, they don't have that same influx of women into Toronto. So you have all of these uh, high tech, you know, High salary men looking to get matched up, but they're they're having trouble finding the woman. Oh, that's, I think I need that's to go Toronto. To Toronto a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only question I have for you. <laughs> hey, hey, well, ladies, there are more guys up there than just Drake up there in Toronto. So let me just say that. Right. <laughs> uh, <Brian. laughs> so walk us through the process on how couple actually works what does the participant need in order to get on couple uh well it's it's you don't really you need to be 18 years or older uh, all you do you go to couple.com you create an account with us and then just sign up for an event we're in beta so the events are free right now uh you'll create a profile with some basic information about yourself a little bit of information about who you're looking for and then when it comes time for the event you'll get an email and a text message with the link and you enter the event uh, mm -hmm. And it's a, we have uh, hosts who will welcome you into the event. So in Atlanta, we use Atlanta-based, uh, you know, micro social media influencers. Uh, so they kind of set the lay of the land, get you going. And then once you're welcomed in, before the dating starts, we have this cocktail hour. Uh, it's about 10 minutes. We call it an hour, but it's about 10 minutes long where you get to mingle with other people who are at the event. You're able to move from table to table and join different conversations. And then the dating starts. You go on. 20 dates, they're, they're three minutes long. You know, after each date, you'll choose couple, you choose connect or cut. You know, we like our alliteration at couple. So it's a uh, couple as if uh, you're interested romantically, connect if you're interested in friendship or cut, cut if you're not interested. Uh, mm. Yeah, and, that's, and then after the dating, we have an after party. 
Um, so, you know, by the time you've gone on 20 dates, your energy is up. You might have had a couple of glasses of wine. You don't want this party to end. So we have the after party where you can hang out in the mingle room and, and that goes for hours. Yeah. Yeah. So you hear that start, you can either connect or cut as opposed to swipe <laughs> right or swipe left. That's right. <laughs> I like the after party myself. I'm all I'm, I'm all in for the after party. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you are. So, Ryan, uh, I got a few more questions. And if we have time, we're going to allow the guests to ask you some questions. Uh, of course, what are the do's and don'ts when it comes to being on couple? Uh, you know, just like anything, any other platform, safety is the number one priority among participants. But what are the do's and don'ts for a couple? Uh, well, some of them you, you want to, you want to look your best. So just because you're at home and you're on your couch doesn't mean that you shouldn't, uh, you know, put on a nice shirt and, and, and make yourself look great for the events. You, you want to start off with that, uh, you know, set yourself up in a nice, uh, a nice area with, with a decent background and good lighting. You want to put your best foot forward, maybe think of some questions in advance so that you, you have stuff to talk about when you jump on your dates. Um, and then on the don't side, I'd say don't ask your, uh, your date for any contact information during the event. That makes a kind of an awkward moment. Uh, don't get too drunk during our event. We've had to boot some people out because they've had a few, few extra glasses. And, uh, and also we have some very friendly, attractive hosts. Don't hit on our host. Please don't hit on our host. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming that has happened a few times. That's happened. It happens yeah. every week. <laughs> wow. All right. So, so those are some solid housekeeping rules there. But uh, what are some of the feedback? What is some of the feedback that you got so far from those that attended the virtual event? Yeah. So like feedback, while you're in beta, feedback's really at the center of everything. The reason we mm -hmm. hold these events now is to learn. So your ticket into the after party is filling our feedback form out. So we have like uh, eight to 10 questions we ask you, and then you can get into the after party. But the feedback's been amazing. 92% uh, say couple is as good as or better than any other online dating platform out there. Uh, two thirds say that they're gonna set, attend the event every single week. Uh, and then, and the best part really is we've gotten a huge list of features, which are just ideas that are coming from uh, our users. So we've got a list that are gonna keep us busy for the next year as we just continue to improve the product. Nice. Nice. All right. We're going to go over to our panel of guests and uh, let's see if any of our guests have any questions. Let's go over to uh, Mario. We're going to grab somebody out of the grab bag here. Mario, do you have a question or uh, feedback for Ryan Beswick? Uh, yeah, I would ask that um, it sounds like a really cool concept as far as uh, doing something different as far as the dating scene go, you know, uh, cause, um, after Tinder and all the things that you guys, uh, name, it can get a little stale and you become kind of numb to it without really getting to know people. You just swiping left, swiping right, not even spending time on it. Cause you get to the point where you're just looking at people. You don't even read the, the profiles anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now this actually give you a chance to, uh, actually get to know somebody really quick. But uh, me being the person that I am, I would ask, um, and I know you in beta, what would be the pricing or the price point that you guys are looking to get into if that's something that you guys are already at? I know it's in beta and I know you're gathering information through the feedback, but what would be that pricing point once this gets to the point where you guys ready to just fully launch? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll start experimenting with pricing toward the end of the year. Um, this is going to be an affordable event. Like we, our dream is to have a huge event where we have like 2,000 people coming into a single event, all ages, uh, all orientations, and then we have a matching engine that takes pairing, uh, takes to, uh, pairing people together, putting them on dates where they're likely to match. And if, you, if you're going to have an event where you want to do that kind of volume, it can't be an expensive an event. Uh, so we're thinking freemium models. Maybe there's some extra features that you pay for. Um, but that, that's really where we're leaning now. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, let's go over to Jess. Jess, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, do you have any like suggested activities or questions that you use as like icebreakers doing the, during the dates? Because sometimes people get stage fright or get timid when they're meeting a new person. So you talk about 
how if you were in person, you kind of got to pull it together in that 30 minute to an hour interaction. So this is three minutes. Like, do you have any suggested icebreakers or things that are incorporated in your beta system to help I, people to connect? Yeah, actually we are. That's one of the features where they're asking for icebreakers to be like on the screen, you know, to, to help you along. Um, we don't have that yet, but that's coming. We're working on it right now. Um, but I'd say one, one thing, you know, as, as we talk to people, you see a lot of conversations where they're talking about, oh, where are you from and stuff like that. And you get through sort of these you know, basic questions and you're already almost the whole way through the event, but it doesn't seem like you've gotten to know each other. I think questions where you start to hone in on, on hobbies and things like that that start to really reveal you know, who you are or maybe talk about what types of music you listen to, some of the places like you like to go out to eat or go out for drinks. You know, like keep it on the fun stuff, start to understand, you know, you know, what makes people tick, those kind of questions work best. Yes, All right. Yeah. All right. So, Ryan, I know you got to go. Uh, I know you are a very busy man trying to keep up with the managing side of couple.com, even though you do events twice a week. It's still a 24 hour grind to keep everything in motion, to keep everything in going. And plus, you are still in the beta process, so I know that there are intricacies and stuff that you got to be able to maintain to keep couple and couple.com intact. Uh, but I heard that you got some events coming up. From my understanding, you are getting ready to uh, execute some big things in the next couple of days or weeks. We are. So on uh, August 24th, we're launching Couple TV. So everything we've been talking about so far is a, is a separate product. This is for somebody looking for you know, a relationship or friendship. Couple TV is totally different. It's entertainment. Um, think of it as the crazy cool love child of online dating and reality TV all mixed in one. Um, so starting on August 24th, it's going to be a series of eight episodes uh, every Tuesday night. Uh, if you watch, you'll see 24 social media influencers who are all single, all looking for love. They're going to go on speed dates on our platform, and then you can watch as they do it. You know, you can click on any video on the screen and switch to that person's date. Uh, viewers can interact with chat. They can vote on who gets eliminated, who gets to carry on. The viewers, mm -hmm. even before the 24th, will get to vote on who gets accepted into the show. So within the next week or so, you'll see that open up on our website. Uh, so that's couple.tv. You can learn more about it there. Oh man, this is this is big. This is this is big. You see the expression on Star's face. This is this is big. Ryan, we got to do something together. The Beat Break Morning Show got to do something together uh, yes. with couple because I, I have a feeling this is going to be very very major, very very big. I mean, and this is our first time actually interviewing you, and we're the first platform to even have this interview. interview before Good Morning America, before the Today Show, before any other TV and radio platform has this interview. We got it first, ladies and gentlemen. Couple TV, I love it. We, we got to do something big, Ryan, I'm telling you. All right, we're, we're down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely talk. But uh, go ahead and give your information one more time uh, for people that want to know more information about Couple, want to partake in it. And uh, once again, the next event coming up for those that want to participate. Yeah, yeah. All right. So it's couple.com. Go there, create your profile, sign up for an event. Uh, we're heads down right now uh, developing software. So on August 24th, that's our uh, couple TV show. And then the next Atlanta event is on August 25th. So be sure to go there. So that's couple.com. And then couple.tv. Uh, right now, you can go in, you enter your email, that's all that's there, but we'll uh, we'll hit you up with more information once it goes live. Nice, nice. Couple TV, couple.com, the place to meet and explore. We, we're going to try to, we're going to try our best, Ryan, to hook everybody up uh, by 2021 because, you know, it's it's almost cupping season, Star. It's, it's almost cupping season. Cupping season <laughs> is upon us. And there are so many single people, especially in Atlanta, 70%, Ryan said it, 70% of people are single. We're going to try to at least get 69 68. <laughs> by the end. But we appreciate it. Uh, Ryan Best with a couple.com. Hey, Ryan, we'll definitely talk, man. I appreciate you for taking time to be on the Beat Break Morning Show. That was great talking to you all. Thanks so much for having me on.
All right. Thank you so much. All Ryan right, Bassett, ladies and gentlemen, right here exclusively on the Beat Break Morning Show, the CEO of Couple, Couple.com and Couple TV. Oh, man. You know, I grew up, Star, I grew up watching a lot of dating shows from back in the day. You know, you remember shows like Blind Date and the, was it, the Third oh Wheel, the Fifth Wheel? Yes. Love mm -hmm. Connection. Love you can Connection. go all the way back to, what was that? Love Connection was my favorite. Yeah. 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 You know, Love Connection was cool. It was cool. It was cool. Um, and then, you know, all the other shows that came after that. But I, 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 I agree. Like, Love Connection, it became very iconic over the years. Yes. Yeah. Love and and then, of course, there was the dating game back in the day, you know, before the Love Connection. You had shows like The Dating Game. Yeah, I remember The Dating Game as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, I really enjoyed the interview. First time on the Beat Break Morning Show. Nobody didn't get this interview, Star. It's Nobody. Exclusive. Yeah. First time. First time for everything, man. You know, we we give it to you raw and first. We always do first things. We we broke artists here on the Beat Break Morning Show. Uh, we gave people exclusive interviews, man. I'm not going to even be on my braggadocious. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Let them check the track record. That's all. We got the track record. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, y'all. It's the Beat Break Morning Show. Uh, like I mentioned, folks, we got a major announcement that we are going to bring to you first on the Beat Break Morning Show. So stay tuned for that major announcement. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce our guest that we have on the Beat Break Morning Show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can check out his show on Beat Break 87 FM and Reach One Network. He does a show each and every Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. He's been on uh, with us, Beat Break 87 FM and Reach One Network for a couple of years now. It's a very informative and very opinionated talk show. And he, he breaks it down, man. I enjoy listening to his podcast. Uh, he goes by the name of Mario Watts. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. How's everybody doing? Glad to Pretty be good. here. Uh, yeah, it's been a really good ride with uh, Beat Break and uh, the Architect, and I appreciate you guys. And hey, let's 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 get it popping. Yeah, man. And this is first time on the Beat Break Morning Show, so I just felt like it was only right that I give him the proper invite to be on the Beat Break Morning Show for the first time. We had your boy Ron Glaze on the show not too long ago. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, grew up with yeah. Ron. Ron, good guy. Good, good guy. Yeah, man. Shout out to Ron G. Also joining with us right here on the Beat Break Morning Show. Uh, she is also single, ladies and gentlemen. She's trying to find love in the ATL. But uh, we talked off air and uh, I had to bring her on because I want to also get a woman's opinion alongside with Star. We're not going to let Star just be the only woman on the Beat Break Morning Show this morning with us guys here. <laughs> so I'm going to bring on this beautiful sister, and she goes by the name of Jess. Jess, what's up? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, how's it going, everybody? I am fantastic. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. What do you think good about morning. the interview? What do you think about the couple? Um, I think that it will be a nice break from the regular apps that are available, especially for Atlanta, dating in Atlanta. There's a lot of what you're doing and never actually any connection. Yeah. Uh, so it will be an opportunity to actually, you know, do a virtual face to face uh, with guys and get the opportunity to be able to, you know, you know, see how it goes without, you know, everybody being so worried about, you know, spending money or wasting gas or, you know, whatever those things that we say are hangups or reasons why we can't date or why we cannot connect. I think it knocks out a lot of the um, the excuses for us actually making real connection. So it, it sounds like a great opportunity. Absolutely. Very, very great opportunity. Well, we really appreciate you in advance for coming on the morning show to weigh in on the convo. And also joining with us right here on the Beat Break Morning Show, he's been on my other podcast alongside with Sharia Thomas, Love and Poetry. And I've actually known this brother uh, a couple of years ago from his visit to the WAOK Studios on Love and Relationships with George Patel that I so humbly produced a few years ago. So he is joining with us for the very first time on the Beat Break Morning Show RJ Hodges, ladies and gentlemen, life coach, motivational speaker. RJ, what's good, homie? 
I'm good, man. How about yourself? Thanks for having me. Hey, man. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. How has your summer been? Uh, summer is coming to a close. Uh, how has your summer been? I said, you look like you've been working out during the summertime. Uh, it's just the lighting. I got a new ring light. It makes it look that way. I shadow it the right way. That's been a good summer. It's been, it's been extremely quick, you know, working on projects and, and getting some things done. But, yeah, it's just going by super quick. Right. All right, man. I feel you, man. I feel you. Well, appreciate you for coming on the morning show with us, man, to dive right into this topic by popular demand. Ah, we've been getting so many, so many comments, so many feedback from one of our last episodes before the season finale. We did a episode called Dating in Atlanta, and it stemmed from a film that I came across on YouTube. Uh, it's a film, it's actually kind of somewhat like a documentary film in a way. And just to give you, for those that didn't tune in to the last episode on Dating in Atlanta, the film explores why people are having a hard time dating in Atlanta. And it's orchestrated by a guy by the name of Jawad, uh, in which we had tried to bring on the morning show. Uh, he couldn't make it. But he recently did a case study on why there have been so many problems between men and women coming together and just going out courting, going out dating and blossoming into a long-term relationship. Uh, so if you haven't seen the movie, it's on YouTube. It's called Dating in Atlanta. And the episode that we did, you all, it got so intense. We had three guys, including myself and DJ Rollum, and another guy who uh, had, I ain't gonna say had the audacity, but uh, he tried the dating apps in the past and he tried to holler at the women in Atlanta and it didn't work out. It didn't work out. <laughs> so he decided to date someone outside of Georgia. Uh, she happens to live in South Carolina. <laughs> and also, um, fun fact, <laughs> an interesting fun fact, um, the woman is white. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, she 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 is white. Uh, the gentleman that we had on the show is black. Uh, we we definitely embrace interracial relationships, interracial marriages, interracial dating. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, he had to go outside of Atlanta and outside of Georgia to be with the person he feels he could be more suitable for. Um, so that's that's what it is, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we had a, a debate. It was a debate. Star, you was there. You was there. Uh, yeah. A lot was said. Yes. Between the men and the women. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so now fast forward. I also came another. I also came across another piece of content. And there's this show called. <laughs> there's this show called F Boy Island. That's on HBO Max. And to give you a quick summary <laughs> of what F Boy Island is, it's a reality series where three women are on an island with dozens of men, and they all have to pick out which one is the nice guy or which one is an F Boy. So I'm going to do this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to play a snippet from the show, just in case you're not familiar. I'm, a, I'm going to play a snippet of it, and then we're going to talk about it. Once again, the show is called F Boys on HBO Max. And here's a little taste of what the show is actually all about. Thank you. 
F Boy Island on <laughs> on HBO Max, ladies and gentlemen. F Boy Island. That was the trailer to F Boy, currently on HBO Max. And uh, yeah, we we have <clears throat> seen so many reality shows come. This is kind of some. This is kind of somewhat like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, but unlike any other it's, it's different kind of the same but it's different it's set on an island and you have three beautiful women on an island 12 dozen men they have to choose which one is a f boy or which one is a nice guy whoever they pick they will do whatever whatever that is <laughs> Wait, let me let me, uh, let me yeah, get this uh, straight, Sean. Let me let me yeah. get it. You okay, know, I'm right. born I'm and sorry. raised in Mario, Atlanta. So does F boy mean, you know, what I think it means? Because you know, we don't say it like that. We just say it straight up. So so here's the thing, Mario, because we did an episode, <laughs> we did a beat break morning show episode a couple of months ago. Shout out to Taj and David and just a touch of Jay. We did a show on the new era of the F boys and the bad, you know what, the bad females. I won't say the actual other word, but we did a show about that. And we pretty much broke it down, the difference between what an F boy is and what a bad B is. And so an F boy, simple and plain, an F boy means that you the guy who may have a lot of money, you have access to resources. You are tall, good looking, handsome, but you have questionable traits that shows or may present itself to where you're not actually ready to be in a committed relationship. Or you just do some F boy stuff. You just go out and cheat while you are in an exclusive, serious relationship. You go out and cheat. Uh, you do questionable things to cause your significant other to question your agenda, to question your motives. Um, you're just an all, you are all around F boy. You act like, uh, you act more like a, a little boy than a man when it comes to responsibilities and um, to do what it takes to keep and maintain a healthy relationship. <laughs> well, okay. I think, I think that the F boys ain't even qualified as, you know, the most handsome anymore nowadays. It's just everybody just out here being raggedy. I think that um, it's kind of like the same sentiment of like, you know, you know, how, you know, the old saying about making a whole housewife. I think that we're trying to make F boys husbands and, you know, and they come in all shapes and sizes, you know, who you would assume might be a nice guy or et cetera, may have, you know, quality and traits, et cetera, can sometimes turn into, Worse than the one that was, you know, that you consider, you know, fit, financially fit, physically fit, all those things. I don't know if the the, the same qualifiers apply because I've seen raggedy behavior from, <laughs> from the whole gamut. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, that, well, hold on, let me get my let me get my Trina F boy instrumental real quick. I'm gonna find. <laughs> I think that's appropriate to play during this conversation. But while I find that, I just gotta ask. There we go. Let's see. Can we play this? There we go. F boy, <laughs> Trina, shout out to Trina. Later. What? But here's the thing. No, let's keep it. Let's keep it to this instrumental right here. But let's ask this question. I want to direct this question to RJ. RJ, mm-hmm. why are we giving F boys <clears throat> airtime? <laughs> why are we giving F boys the energy and the time to show? people that this is their time this is their era this is their age why, why do you think so because it sells <laughs> this is definitely going to sell so <laughs> i mean I, I think i think when you use terms like that it's a it's an overly used term first and foremost everybody doesn't define it in the way you just defined it yes, but it's just something yes. that people say and they put out there when they didn't attract what they actually wanted. So we have to title that as something because it's a disappointment. So then we just say, oh, it must be a group of these people out here. And I think the term just becomes popular and it's a good sale. And 
you know, we, we run with it from that standpoint. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. And, and let me just add this, um, in the nineties, right. When I was growing up in Atlanta and stuff, that term had a whole totally different meaning than what you just said. It, did, it was, an, it, it, it was an offensive. If somebody called you that those were fighting words. That was like the lowest of the low. If somebody called you that, at least, you know, in Thomasville where I grew up, that was, I mean, that was a really derogatory thing that didn't have nothing to do with relationships or anything. You were just an overall not right person if you were called that or deemed to be that. Absolutely. I agree. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say, you know, we, we we overly use these terms, but they don't mean the same thing for everybody. I'm mm-hmm. I'm born and raised in Atlanta as well. And that definitely didn't mean that when I was born. So yes, I agree. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but we but see from our culture though, we come up with new terms pretty much all the time. Uh, you know, you said just back in the day, we didn't have that terminology or what have you. It's the same thing with side chicks. We didn't have that terminology. That terminology wasn't used 20 years ago. Uh, it were mistresses, mistresses or the woman on the other side or the lady of the evening or whatever. But now <laughs> side chicks, <laughs> right, you right. know, so that has been the cultural norm. But now F boys. I mean, come on, it, it, you know, how did, how did we get here? Like, even when I first saw the show F-Boy Island, I watched only a few episodes. They are still in its first season. But how did we get here? I mean, how did we get here to where a major premium channel, HBO, can distribute this type of content? Because, like, you know, years ago, we would have never, ever seen this type of content on TV. Do you think that they are purposely showing this to educate men on who they should actually be towards a woman? Or you, do you think this is just an exploitation of all the F-boys that are out there? It's definitely not trying to teach uh, like he said, it's about money and entertainment. If it's if it's just shocking enough to make you watch, then that's what they're going for. And and ultimately, it's going to make money. You know, people are going to subscribe, pay their little money to uh, get the HBO Max subscription. And it's, it's only about entertainment. I mean, and ultimately, I'm not into this, but even by you hyping it up, it makes me say, I'll check out a couple episodes. I might not pay for the subscription, but it do make me want to just see what it's about. Yeah, you, you might want to go and get that free trial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't mean to hype it up or anything. You know, I, I'm just curious to know how did we get here to where a platform like HBO Max could show this type of thing. And, and I've been kind of pondering this for a while now. So here's the thing. Prior to me watching the show, I had this woman at my job. And she talks about how she um, ends up always attracting F-boys. She keeps having F-boys come to her, holler at her, what have you. But she goes to them. So it's like they meet in the middle or whatever. You know, she goes to them and what have you. You know, she's into guys that are like the tall, good looking, got a lot of money type of thing, what have you. And it's the same scenario all the time. She either gets cheated on, disrespected on, she's been lied to. But at the same time, she's kind of like liking the F boys in a sense where it's like, oh, you know, he did this to me, blah, blah, blah. But it's just something about the F boys that I'm attracted to. That's, that's why she's like, getting wow. <laughs> Go ahead, RJ. <laughs> no, I would say that's why she's getting it then. I mean, you know, when we talk about attraction, nobody really wants to admit or, or own the fact that you're attracting more of what you already are, right? So mm-hmm. if that's a universal law, then she's getting that. So it's not that, oh, I don't know where this is coming from. You might not want to admit that it's something mm-hmm. about you that, that likes this, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, but she keeps attracting the same thing. That's you know, that, that's not a, a outside thing. That's an inside thing. Because that same person, you know, people will say, well, I can't date in Atlanta. So let me go to Charlotte. Let me go to L.A. 
But I know people that will go to those other cities and sooner or later, they'll say the same exact things that they said in Atlanta. That's not a, a geography thing. That's a you thing. Right. So, yep. Yep. Right. yep. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And like I you know. said earlier about um, fitting the narrative, that's like sometimes us men will say, well, somebody asked, why you stop dating? Oh, man, she crazy. Sometimes we quick to say that about women. But does that make her crazy? Because she wouldn't let you do what you wanted to do. It didn't fit your narrative. So we quick to label that. And some maybe that woman you're talking about was quick to say they F boys because it didn't fit what she want or they wouldn't allow her to move the way she wanted to move. Absolutely. Sometimes, not in every case. Very yeah. true. That's a good one. Yeah, I, I, and I... <laughs> So I, I agree with you both. I agree with um, you both on the fact that Mario and Arjo on the fact that it doesn't fit the narrative narrative because Mario said that earlier in his own way as far as, oh, well, maybe they didn't give what they what the woman wanted. So now, oh, he's an F boy or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess being a millennial in the terms we use it as... And I'm, I'm, I guess I'm speaking from what I hear and because I don't call any man that and I wouldn't, you know, I have a lot of things I can call a man, but that's not one of them. But when I hear the conversations, sometimes it's more of the, the way that they treat you is very low in vibrations like they they may be rude they may be disrespectful or they may be the type that will sleep you know get at your sister your cousin your best friend and just not care like so it's kind of one of those things where we we call them that because they are definitely on some effed up stuff they doing effed up things yep. and it's like okay so you earned the title and it used to be called a tool. Do y'all remember when they used to call guys like, oh, he's a tool? Mm -hmm. Like, I do. Think, yeah, I think the terminology has kind of changed to he's an F boy now. It's gotten more vulgar <laughs> and people have gotten mm -hmm. a little bit more expressive on how they say it. And see, guys used to, back then, they used to admit that they were tools. Like, yeah, I'm a tool. So when I saw that F boy island thing and the guys were like, you know, kind of like embracing the fact that they're F boy. Yep. I looked at it at on different terms, like, okay, if it means tool or if it meant, you know, those type of things that it meant before, then you're admitting that you're a tool. However, the terminology is a little bit degrading for me. And I feel like even putting that show on a platform is kind of showing in a different light that uh, we can just address men in a certain type of way. And I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of low vibrations for me. I don't really like it too much. Mm. Star says she doesn't like it too much. Mario says he wants to see it, see it for himself. The, uh, the first three episodes of F Boy. But let me go over to Jess. Jess is single in Atlanta. Uh, do you have a testimony? Have you ever came across or been in a relationship or dated an F Boy before? Oh, 100 percent. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she said that so Absolutely. confidently. <laughs> yeah. yes, I have. yes, I have. And I, first of all, in, in addressing F Boy Island, I think that it sensationalizes like bad behavior or the 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 the, the symbols that bad behavior might exist. And then we're glorifying it for some ratings and some money. It's not something I would ever watch. I'm not really a reality TV person, so it wouldn't interest me anyway. But it's just one of those things that people might tune into, like RJ said, because it seems like it might, you know, you know, pique your interest to see people get done wrong on TV. So, you know, that's exciting to some people, not to me, but some people like it. Um, now, in regards to personal experience, I think that online dating, online dating, period, you run across a lot of variants, which is a huge uh, buzzword currently uh, in the post in the, in the post panini press, you know, we uh, that we are living in. But there are variants to, to the um, to the F boy uh, attitude. Um, some dudes are because, again, you can say, hey, I'm not here for sex. I'm not here for da 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 in your profile. And I'd be like, yeah, I like you. You're beautiful. Blah, 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 blah. Like three sentences in and they're just like, so can I come over to your house and have sex? 
I would really like that. To me, that is F boy behavior, uh, just because it speaks of a level of immaturity. <laughs> um, it, it it speaks to you know just like. And, and I know this a lot of averages off to ask guys like, hey, why do you go out of your way to just try to, you know, ask for sex, ask for sex. But then are also the, at the same time, the duality of it is if they are approached by prostitutes, I'm not a prostitute, just put it out there. But I'm saying they'll they'll often often talk about how, you know, yeah, she was putting all this out there. And then I realized she was a prostitute and you're completely offended. I was like, but you're going to ask me to give it up for free and you don't even know my last name. The irony is amazing to me, but I feel like there's levels to the F-boy behavior. Um, but I've had a lot of date, uh, dating instances where it just, it's feel like, it's like a, a way for people to just kind of usurp things from you, pull, use things from you so that they can get what they want and then they just kind of move on. And again, um, I know you keep giving like a specific, specific descriptors, Sean, but I feel like F-boys come in all shapes and sizes. It's the ones that, you know, you would think would be the, you know, quote unquote, nice guy. And I feel like that's just a stereotype. Oh, God. Because, you know, you, me started. you can be sitting on a big wallet and you're like, I can, women are disposable. I can get whatever I want. Then why are you here? So go get it. You know? So again, personal experience, uh, dealt with somebody, seemed like great connection, many dates, you know, like seven, eight dates in like one week, you know, just hanging out, nothing crazy, nothing sexual, just like connecting and, you know, all the good, all the vibes, all the good stuff, you know? <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> and then um, all of a sudden just like disconnected. And then I'm like, Hey, what happened? You know, cause again, I like closure. I like understanding. I want to be able to make sure that I'm like, cause if I'm giving off something, cause sometimes we are unaware of what we, we are adding to a situation. And so I appreciate feedback because it's just information. It doesn't mean that I take it to heart and feel like I'm gonna die alone. It just means, okay, maybe this is something you could work on, girl. And he was just like, yeah, I just, I stopped being interested. I felt like you wasn't gonna give me no sex. And so I just was like, what is the point of this? And you weren't handing out money. I was like, oh yeah, definitely. You're right. You should have moved on. But you know, I feel like that's F boy behavior. If I was gonna use that term, that will, that will be qualified. Or you also have instances where there are men who will um, just kind of like keep you around because they like having somebody around. Like how some chicks go out for the free food, you know, they go on dates for the free dinners. Some dudes go on because they just like to have somebody to text every morning, good morning, beautiful, but not actually ever having an intention. And you know that the other person's intention, and this is again, men and women that can do this type of behavior and you never have an intention on making it anything solid. And you continue with it, not because you're trying to figure anything out, but you just like having somebody around. Because again, two or three conversations, two or three dates does not constitute, that does not a marriage make or a relationship, long-term relationship make. But if you have absolutely no intention of dealing with that person beyond a sexual encounter, beyond being able to have somebody on your text line or whatever, I feel like those things are questionable behaviors that you should probably check within yourself because the second that somebody does that to you, then you are appalled, you're upset, you're angry. And nobody ever is like, oh yeah, I probably deserve that. Like re I've really heard people heard people say that, but it's just one of those things where the balance is, is so many imbalances and we just kind of feel like, oh yeah, whatever. And so in online dating, you have to, in dating in Atlanta specifically, you just gotta have to let a lot of stuff roll off your back and not take it personally because you kind of realize that that is a part of, it's kind of woven into our culture at this point about these interactions being very, 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 very disposable. Mm, mm -mm. And I want to add something that you didn't add on the dating site. Um, the guys that definitely promote that they're looking for marriage. Oh, I'm ready to be married. I'm looking for marriage. I want to find my wife on here. And they're doing that just to get, you know, in somebody's pants. And they're not, you know, genuine about those things like that. That to me is F boy behavior as well. I mean, it's <laughs> low class, low budget, beneath me behavior because 100%. you shouldn't even have to lie to do that, honey. And if you got to go that far, then you need to check yourself from within. I mean, just, yeah. just tell the truth. So would it be fair to say that Will Smith was an F boy? Not the, <laughs> not the actor. Ah! Not, not, I mean, I'm sorry, not the, the person, not the actor, the actor. Because if you remember... The Fresh Almost Prince of Bel Air. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was about that life. Was a, yeah, he he did an episode. I mean, this this shows you how many episodes I watched the Fresh Prince. I watched every episode of the Fresh Prince. But there was an episode where Will Smith was getting with 
uh, what's the actress name? Kim Fields, I believe, mm -hmm. who was saving herself until marriage. <laughs> and Will Smith's character, Will Smith, said, hey, let's get married. But he only did that to get into her pants. Yeah, correct. So he, so would it be fair to say he was an boy? Correct. Yes. <laughs> wow. I have a question. RJ got a question. What's up? So this is something I've never really been able to process. So I do understand that I don't I don't condone any man, you know, lying or saying that he wants one thing and he's really looking for something else. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of like if you meet somebody, even if they say they want marriage, if in three weeks you're sleeping with them, you're not married to them yet. You made a decision too. You know what I mean? Like whether they were really had good intentions or not. You made a decision based off of what? Like you, you don't have the marriage yet. You don't have a promise yet. You don't have a real commitment yet. So I feel like if you made that decision in the heat of the moment or whatever to, to be with somebody or to sleep with somebody or continue to do that, like, can you really say, oh, this person tricked me or they did me wrong? No, you two adults made a decision. That person may be a, a scummy person for mm -hmm. knowing that they don't want X, Y, Z, but you didn't have X, Y, Z when you made the decision to do whatever you did. So how do you, like, how do you justify saying this person took advantage of me? Well, I, I've never been or, or can you ask the question, or can you ask, like, what signs did you see early on with the guy before you? Yeah, yeah, you before, before you did, like, so my, th my thought process is if, like if somebody's looking for a relationship, right? What are your, like, what are the standards that you're willing to, not go past. So if you say you need this guy and you're looking for a relationship, but you say he might be a quote unquote F boy because he could be lying, then maybe the standard is I don't sleep with this person until I actually get the commitment that I'm looking for. But if you don't have that standard and you sleep with this person prior to that commitment and then you find out later he re wasn't really serious, but you're like, oh, he did me wrong. But you made a decision prior to getting anything of the standard. I'm not saying he's right, he's actually wrong, but isn't that a shared responsibility at that point or no? Well, that's that's asking women. I, I will say, I wanna, I got something to say. Now, that oh, is girl. true, that is true. I will say this, RJ, it is a shared responsibility, but we're talking about initially. And initially, if we're looking at your profile and your profile is saying something, be we're attracted to what it is saying that you are looking for. So at that point, it has nothing to do with shared responsibility. It has something to do with you being genuine about what you're looking for. And okay, question. Okay, when you get finished. And not literally, literally putting out there something that we know that it is not. Now, once you get to know that person and you vibing with that person, then it's my choice. Let it be my choice. Don't you make a choice for me. Don't you dare tell me you yes. want to do something else. And then you, because that is leading someone in the wrong direction. Now, if I decide to leave my cats and I lead it in that direction, that's my choice. That it, 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 We can't say, oh, you know, hey, well, he did do that, but, um, you decided to give it up anyway, so who fought it? No, 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 no. I I agree with you in certain aspects of that, but also I feel like the initial, you know, interaction with someone, especially online dating, especially when you don't know that person and they're really trying to sell who they are as a genuine person and who what they want from you they should just go ahead and put it out there. There are people online that put it out there. Like, look, I'm just looking for this. And they- No, I agree. I agree. No, I agree. I just, I just didn't understand that if, if you meet somebody, let's say, let's say I met you, right? And we go out on four dates. My profile did say I'm looking for marriage or I'm looking for a relationship. It may be true. But on date four, we have some type of chemistry. We sleep together. We haven't gotten to relationship status. We haven't gotten to, of course, not marriage status. And let's say after that, we talk some more, but it just fizzle out. Do I become an F boy because it didn't turn into a relationship? Because I've heard I've heard women say, well, you know, this this person did this to sleep with me. But in that scenario, I don't I don't agree with that. I feel like the sleeping with each other was a mutual decision and it happened. 
because it didn't blossom into what this person originally said that they wanted, or this person didn't turn out to be what you wanted, you can't say that this person did something wrong to me. Now, if it's deliberate, like I need to be in a relationship with you before I sleep with you and I say, well, yeah, let's be together and then sleep with you and then I disappear, absolutely wrong. That is that boy behavior right, right there. That's yeah. It. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Because again, you might be just like, like, like Star said, you just vibing, you feeling it. And as a woman, we have the right to make that decision. Say, you know what? I'm making a decision. I'm going to surrender my body or give, or I'm making the choice to merge my body with this other person to have this, this experience. And again, we have the right to be, that's the, that's the power of agency. But when it is, you know, you waiting and waiting, the old boy is waiting and waiting and waiting because he like, I just need to be able to see if I can get it. I didn't be able to see if I can get it. Because again, there are a lot of profiles that are like, yeah, you know, they're putting it out there. They're like, hey, I'm a, you know, Dom looking for a sub. I'm in the BDSM. I'm in the polyamory. I'm in this and this and that. That gives me the opportunity to make the decision and say, hey, this is just not something I want to do. And I'm okay with that. Because then I'm like, I appreciate that information. That's the information right. that I can use. But if you're like, I'm looking for marriage. I don't want no, no, uh, I'm not just looking to smash. I don't believe in casual sex. Da 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 da. And then my first conversation again after three sentences, you like, man, what size is your bra? Can I come over? <laughs> um, you know, tell me how you would give me such certain oral situations. Like right. I, I've had it happen more times than I can count from people that are like, marriage is the only thing on my mind. And I <laughs> like, you know, literally in the profile, and then the immediately we have made it through ten minutes of conversation, and then that's what's happening. It's just, it's, it's annoying if nothing else. And then well, you have to wait through all that. Jessica, well, maybe they may consider you guys married after initial conversation. Cause you know, <laughs> back in the days after initially <laughs> and trying and having intercourse, then you were officially considered married back in the day. Mm, so oh, maybe in their minds, they're thinking after that initial conversation, that initial, hey, hey, Y'all married. So now they can have these type of conversations where they're talking about what your hoo-ha look like. All right, just send me a picture real quick. I just want to see. <laughs> but, 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 but real hey, quick. If you send it to me, if you send it to me, I'm going to send something back. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> but real quick, just because, you know, as, as, as she said that, someone said that marriage is totally what's on my mind, the only thing I'm focused on. Even if that is completely true, uh, there are steps, you know, before you get to marriage. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's a few things you have to go through. So if something feels out like RJ said before y'all get to that point, that doesn't make necessary he did something wrong. It's just that y'all didn't do it till you got to that particular point. Right. S sometimes, you know what I mean? So so if he say he want to be married and and it doesn't get to that point. I mean, it, it happens sometimes for whatever reason, mm -hmm. things fizzle out. But if y'all decide to make a conscious effort to sleep with each other, do whatever before that point, sometimes it's kind of nobody fault. It's, it's what they say, right. they say, charge it to the game sometimes. It just fizzles out for whatever reason. Yeah, but I, it, I agree. Yeah. I but agree. it depends on, I think what the ladies have said is you can kind of tell early on in oh, the we approach. We got Linda Woods in the building, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hold on, we got to bring you on properly because I know you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I know you ready to dive right in, dive right in, Melinda. But uh, thank you for coming back on the Beat Break Morning Show. All right, thank go you ahead for Melinda. having me. Uh huh. No, yeah, I just it's. I mean, I, I don't I don't think we should be um, silly, right, and ignore what we just know. Right, you know the difference between someone someone acting as if they're interested in something long term and someone right. who was um, putting out candy to attract a certain type of person with no intentions of long-term. That behavior is two different things. Now, if you have the behavior of someone who is looking for something long-term and, and it so happens to not pan out, that's one thing. But it's too many cases where it's obvious, like I think Jessica may have mentioned, one case where it's like, this is obviously, you know, you were, it was like a bait and switch type thing. Yeah. Correct. Well said, well said. Yeah. I mean, if he asking you your bra size and what color your pen is, I mean, obviously that's, right. you know, red flags and, you know, <laughs> you have to move on. I want, somebody, I want somebody serious. Please don't ask me for sex. That's just not what I'm here for. And then immediately in the chat, it's like, man, how big are they, though? Just, I mean, could I please know? It's just bothered me. 
sir, bye. Then you got to get blocked because that's, and, and it, it's just unattractive and it's, it's so many things and it reads to so many other things that might be going on. And again, there are plenty of prostitutes on these online dating apps <laughs> that are ready to give you exactly what you want yep. immediately without you having to provoke <laughs> or, or entice or anything like that. And they're ready to give it to you. Why would you go for it? Go after them. Instead, you're like, no, the one that said, please don't ask me for sex. You're like, no, her. That's who I need. That's who I want. That's what I got to have. And then you turned it into something else. And you're like, <laughs> oh, you stuck up because you don't want to. I guess so. Yeah. Too bad. I mean, the game has changed, ladies and gentlemen. The game has changed. And for sure. like these dating no apps. Dude, this, these dating apps are wild. I'll be in those dating apps and I'll be seeing women that look like they could be out there in the streets at night. But then you look at that profile, the description, some of them are working as government official employees. Some of them are ITs and some of them might be a police officer. Sure. You know, well, so, I mean, so what are you saying exactly? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't I'm judge just, a book by its cover. And, 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 and well, well, I mean, I personally will say that you can be a very um, um, sexually charged, high, high sexual individual and still be looking for something long term yet again. Right. But, but Melinda, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. OK, so. We're on dating apps. We're on social media all the time. And I see it all the time of women sticking their asses out, showing all of this and stuff like that. But you cannot get mad at the men that be shooting their shot via DMs because of what they saw you posing as on social media and on DMs. What you put out there is what you get. Ooh, look at you shooting fire shots. Hey, 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 you finna open a can of worms, but go ahead. <laughs> fire shots. <laughs> I say yeah, I'm not all mad. The time. I say this all the time. The energy that you put out is going to come back to you. I'm not mad. In that instance, I'm not mad. Because I don't care about somebody DMing me because I'll just ignore the hell out of you, right? So that's, right. The, that's not a thing. I mean, if you're talking about intentional profile right that says this is i'm, I'm looking to date uh, if you're on social media you're not necessarily looking to date. some people are really into themselves and they're showcasing their beauty and external internal if you love it if you like it great that doesn't mean that i'm going to talk to you in a dm it doesn't mean that i'm looking to have a marriage with you either so those are two different things to me now when you're on an app which i think you guys were kind of talking about even you can be on social media in a in a, in a dating uh, room or what have you group that's a, a little different. And I personally am not angry at anybody thinking that they're coming at somebody any kind of way, but that does not remove intention. And that does not remove people being able to use their reason to judge your intention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm all, that's all I'm saying. The dude we had on the show last time, Star, he met the woman of his life, supposedly on Facebook. Look at my face. <laughs> oh, that was boy. that was that was the mess. You guys need to tune into that last show. That man, yeah, he I listened to it. Said he was looking for one thing, and he was not going to be doing no long distance dating. He ain't going out his way. He none tried that. It ain't did that. And the moment that lady opened up her uh, legs, sent the video of her hoo ha. He got in his car and drove his ass on the side. He eliminated the distance. <laughs> that doesn't, Motivation. That doesn't make him an F-boy. That's for purposes. That doesn't make him an F-boy. That, no, I would not that say that make. does. That just makes him uh -huh. very, very... Hypocritical. Weak, weak, weak for the VJJ. Weak for the VJJ, okay? Because mm -hmm. I can that it made him... Take that extra. The the, the JJ made him go back on everything he said, okay, <laughs> and take that trip. <laughs> but, but RJ got, got a point though. <laughs> RJ, what the question was? I said, "What does that make her?" Oh, I mean, I I got a lot of words for what that make her, but I'm, we're not we're not focused on what was what she did. We're focused on what he because he had boundaries he had set up and he had made some standards for himself. And the moment 
that an opportunity presented itself in, a, in another light, the light that he wasn't trying to go back into, he hopped right on into it. And so it goes back to what you said again, RJ, about people, you know, saying some things and doing some other things. He said some yeah. things. We're all, we're all walking some other people to some degree. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I, I mean, if, I, if we can be honest, we've all said something. I'm not doing that. And yeah, you did that. So, you know, maybe that was his moment. Maybe she was the one. <laughs> or maybe the picture was that great. I mean, you know. <laughs> it was a video, and I'm pretty sure it was okay. that. Step it up. It was like it was really encouraging for him. Um, however, what I will say is he, on that episode, he still left in question of what could possibly be. Because after he went and got the hoo-ha, he still went back to well, I don't know where we are. I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah. So for me, it's kind of like it defeated the whole purpose because you're now, you now went back. You should have just stuck to your gun and kept it where it was or whatever the case may be. And, you know, we, we go through these things. I'm not perfect. We go through these things. But it comes to a point where sometimes you just got to stand on your ground even if it looks real good and tasty and you just want a little sample of it, you might <laughs> pass that sample up. <laughs> I, I just think it's it's just communication to me. It's just communication to me from the jump. Like, where are we? Before or after? Because sometimes there can be a Love Jones moment. <laughs> you can meet somebody, click, you all have sex on the first night, the second night. You know what I mean? Okay, sure. And then sparked the Third night, fourth night, and this that was right. it. <laughs> wow. And you married on the fifth night. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, whoa. No, no, no. no. It's a, it's a, wait, I wait. sound like you were saying it. You were like, yeah. <laughs> you said me like, wait, wait, wait. That's a big thing. Uh, not not marriage. Like, that's a big deal. You can't do that fast. <laughs> You can do all yeah, the rest. Oh, can't be that fast. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah, slow down. Wait a minute. Hold Why? on now. Right. <laughs> why not? Like why? I'm giving my body away hella fast. Let's not right, get papers down. Let's do it. The gravity, Wait, so giving, yo, the giving gravity. Giving a body away equates to marriage. Yeah, right. no, but it's a major life decision. Back in the day. Whoa, 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 whoa. Giving a body away equates to. I'm, I'm just gonna re echo what Mario Watts said. Giving your body away equates to marriage. That's how deep it is. That's how y'all need to think, and then y'all wouldn't be so quick to give that penis up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that used to be. I was, to Star's point, that was definitely the measurement back in the day. Yeah. Mm. But sex is sex is not one sided though. You know what I mean? Like you're not. If I'm having sex with a woman, she's consenting. Like so, it's not one sided. So it's not. It's not I, I gave something to her or she gave we gave something to each other. Like so you so so you are also married, sir. Right. So that, <laughs> you have sex. That's all that means. The same rules apply to you, sir. I didn't I didn't hear you coming. You are also then married. <laughs> not just the woman, also the man also, if he's having sex with someone. That's all that says. Like it's it, it if it is equal, then it's equal, right? So the gravity that women put on their body, if you want to put that same level of gravity on the on your body and access to it, then great. And there are some men who do. Few, but there are some men who do. Okay. You know, there's women. a difference between sex and, you know, there's a difference between sex and intimacy. Yes. Correct. But also as women, from, the, from a very early age, we are taught to place value on our bodies, on our virginity, on our sexuality, and everything. So we are taught very differently about how we view what sex is. Do yeah. some of us cast those thoughts away as we get older or do, or do our mindsets evolve? Yes. But from a little girl, I know personally, I was taught that you don't just give that to any, anybody or, or anyone just because. And that's a lot of times where we're put in these crazy situations where if consent is not an option, you know that someone has taken something away from you. That's why the word violation is used, because it's something that's being stolen. And so if you look at it from that point of view, you're like, this is a heavy weight, a, an imaginary but heavy weight on a female shoulders when she is entering to, into this where we, you know, again, you know, church kid and whatever, this covenant. And again, that's why you were betrothed and a conversation could have meant engagement and then marriage and all other stuff. And even though it's not like that anymore, it's still like that. 
for some of us. And so you can't, so it's like, I have my most precious gift and jewel that I'm only supposed to let one person touch, but then I let a hundred people touch. But for me, and they're like, I got Skittles. <laughs> he wants them. <laughs> you know, but, they but, shaking it in the hand. That's the part, that's the part I don't understand though. That's the part I don't understand. If, if it is this precious jewel and you're only supposed to let one person touch it, why didn't you not just let one person touch it? When you made a decision to let more than one person touch it, I, I guess I'm I'm trying to figure out what what are you saying? Are you saying that like who who does who does that responsibility lie on if you are taught that but you but you quote unquote violate that? Because if that were the case and the woman that did not wait until marriage, what what does that say about her? Does that say because if you only waiting for one person, then this wouldn't be a conversation. You would have waited until you were actually married to have sex if that was the the standard, but if you did it outside of that, it's almost like you rolled the dice before time, but you can't be mad if you rolled the dice before this standard thing happened. Is that, maybe I'm, I'm looking at that's, it a different way. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, because there are instances, and I'll say that I've been in that situation on both ends. So when I, I was married previously, many, many moons ago, but I was married previously, and I was a virgin when I got married, because my intention was to only give that precious jewel to one person. The marriage did end, and so post-marriage, I had to make a decision in regards to dating and sex and relationships, et cetera, on how I would move forward. Um, there were certain deficient discrepancies from being with only one person because not lack of knowledge, based information, teaching, et cetera. Um, when I use the word, and also just to backtrack, when I use the word violation, I'm talking about assault, lack of consent when something has happened. I'm not talking about like violation in regards to just handing it out because again, that is decision-based. But it's decisions in both scenarios, decision to save myself for my husband, a decision to have sex after my marriage. And when I'm going through these relational situations, I every time I'm with someone, I have to make the decision that I'm going to do it. So I'm not talking about me trying to lay the guilt or blame or whatever you want to call it on somebody else. It is a mutual situation. Unless, unless it lacks consent, then that is considered a violation and or assault. But when I am talking about me just making a decision to be with someone, yes, it is my choice and my decision. If I decide to do this, if we both say we want a relationship, but we both decide before we enter into a relationship that we are going to have some physical interaction that results in sex, then that is both mutually our decision. But, and nobody's putting all the blame on, on men. Cause again, it's a lot of women, it's some, some, you know, some bad girls out there that's, you know, doing the things and they, they do it for sport too, you know, the, I guess the locker room talk, or whatever you want to call it, it's some, it's some wild girls out there. But for those of us who are making decisions to not just, you know, hand it out like Skittles, again, you constantly are fighting with that mindset of yeah. being sexually liberated, owning your body, et cetera, having new experiences, but also understanding that there are still social stigmas that are connected to being promiscuous or being sexually free in certain areas. And you could just use certain language and be considered someone that is not valued or pristine or whatever, whether you're doing it or not, it's certain assumptions that happen. And you have to garner yourself because they like, man, we did it on the first night. I didn't know you was a hoe. <laughs> Even though we both had that same situation. Right. I had sex with you and you had sex with me, but I'm the hoe. I like, all never that in my life kid. thought that way, ever. And when we, right. if you did it with someone on the first night, I've never looked at it like you disgust me after we've done well, it. Well, you, you are very mature. You know that to me, I thought we 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 vibed and whatever happened happened because we was adults and and that was that. I never thought anything because if you're gonna call her a hoe, what does that make you though? You know what I mean? If yeah. you're looking at it realistically, I like so, what you're saying. You mature. That's a mature man. That's a mature mind, not a premature mind. So when you think like that, you're actually looking at the bigger picture. Like, yeah, we just. We vibe, we smashed, it is what it is. It's over. But a lot of minds ain't mature. They ain't on that level. So they looking like, she, oh, she done gave it up on the first night. She she loose. She and and remember the conversation was relative to marriage. So right. if you think about that woman differently then you would thinking about someone that is wife material. So that's really the, not just in general, you are all right with me. But does your <laughs> does she somehow drop or change in your evaluation system of women from that activity is really more of the question. Because yeah. I've heard a lot of men say, well, how, how do I know she ain't doing that with every dude she date? 
that's normally the question that I've heard come up. And again, that may not be you, gentlemen. That may that may have never come across your mind ever because you know y'all have ascended. But there are some gentlemen who might have that mindset. And again, they were there too. They got what they needed. But they're like, oh, like, oh, she just gave it. I mean, the first, the first night, oh my God. Or the third date, or ah, it only took me three weeks to break that down. Or oh. And so you see the, you know, the the difference in how yeah, things I, I, are. I see the at. difference, but we'd all run out, we are all of a certain age here. We'd all run ourselves ragged if you were about you know, the past, cause let's say right now, if, if me and you got to a certain point, I wouldn't be expecting you to have saved yourself for me at this point. And if I'm sitting here worrying about your past, I would rather for you to be with the right one than say yourself for just one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, I, I mean, that's, that's the way I would it look at from it. My experiences, you know, I mean, it's just one of those things. Like it, <laughs> again, being in a marriage where I was a virgin, there were certain things that just weren't on my mind. Didn't understand didn't know until I learned. You know, yeah. and so you're yeah. not going to get the same person that just weathered the storms, has been had some hills and valleys, all those things. Um, but <laughs> it's just one of those things. I'm like, and again, you're speaking, like Star said, you're speaking from a mature gentleman's mindset. Um, and we're speaking about the 97% that we probably deal with on these dating apps that are not in, in that same mindset. They, they're here to the divide and conquer those legs. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. <laughs> Conquer those legs. Divide, yeah. divide and conquer. Yeah. Divide, divide and conquer. <laughs> With the Red Sea. <laughs> I, I do have a question. And for those who are just tuning in to the Beat Break Morning Show, we are piggybacking on one of our last episodes on dating in Atlanta. This is dating in Atlanta part two, or just dating in general. We have our guests, RJ Hodges. We have Jess. We have Melinda Woods. We also have Mario Watts from the Random Select Podcast. Yours truly, Sean Garvey, along with Star Kells. DJ Bowling couldn't make it this morning. But that leads me to my next question. And you, you all kind of somewhat partially answered it, but I want to dig a little bit deeper into it. And I want to piggyback on something that Jess just mentioned. Is there such thing as an F girl? Because if we're going to throw the term F boy, it should be equal across the board. I mean, should it? Should it not? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's 100% true. Same criteria, too. Mm -hmm. Same criteria. F girl. Mm -hmm. He's out there trying to get it, trying to see what you trying to see what you can get out of the situation. Um, a lot of the a lot of the times what I've witnessed is women just trying to get things or whatever, and they use their sexuality as a tool or they weaponize it so that it will be something to be able to get you what you want in these situations. And so again, there are plenty of sugar daddy websites where you can go and get you somebody old that came really good. You know, you ain't really got to give up no sugar. But instead, you're like, oh, I'm gonna make the decision to pull it out of somebody that I know I can emotionally or mentally control and I use my sex and my sexuality to be able to draw mm-hmm. them in. I've seen, I've witnessed that too. Again, it depends on your own personal moral compass. Mm-hmm. Um, but women can just, can be equally as predatory. And mm-hmm. that's the whole point. I feel like the F boy or F girl behavior is based out of predatory behavior. If there is no respect. There are no boundaries. You're going to get what you need, what you need to, you're going to say what you need to say, do what you need to do to get what you want. So if that's sex, Ooh. if that is material goods, whatever, mm. you're going to do that and be like, ah, thanks. And then you discard that person after that, if whatever, I got what I needed, or after that need has been fulfilled. And then you move on to the next person or vic- and or victim. Mm. <laughs> Jess broke it down. I like that. Well, you know what? I think, I think, you know what, Jess? I think I attracted a few F girls in my lifetime. I think I have. Really? You know, and because there, there are some F girls out there that will look at a nice guy like myself and take advantage of what he has or what he could bring to the table. I've been in those circumstances and situations mm-hmm. at the time, you know, and it, it wasn't just, just the sex. It could just be something where you know, I'm just going to go out with this guy. I'm not really attracted to him, but I'm just trying to get a free meal. I'm just trying to get out of the house. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that free meal thing is a whole situation. Don't let you be hungry. You want some crab legs? Just go out and be like, mm, you hungry? You feel like going out? Or you want to go to the juicy crab? <laughs> 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 it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Man. 
that I always start with, like he said, that I'm bored. What you doing? I'm just bored. You want to go out somewhere? <laughs> it always starts that way. Mm. But as a man, like you, <laughs> want over. you want some company? No, thank you. No, I don't want any company. I'm great. But but as a man, once you get to the point in your life where you realize that every woman you come in contact with or or might like you, you ain't meant to sleep with every woman. It opens up your brain to see more things because once you can't be manipulated by sex anymore, it, it deduces F girls in your life because ultimately we all, you know, most men are trying to get to the sex. Once it's not weaponized, like she said, anymore, then you start seeing things for how they really are. And then you start realizing, oh, she don't bring to the table what I would want. And and like RJ said about standards, once you stop mm -hmm. moving the line on your standards, a lot of boot BS can't come your way no more because you're standing fast on that standard line. Right. And also, the, I feel like there's an oversaturation of information shared in ways that it's just like ridiculous if you if you gentlemen knew how many dms we get through all sorts of social media you post a picture fully clothed i got on a, a nun's habit but i might have on some lip gloss man them lips they right. just look so amazing mm. I, everything is covered this is covered <laughs> this is covered and all you see is 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 my face you're like wow and then you think and then don't add in the penis pics it's like you can get penis anywhere and so you have to bring something to the table besides you swinging that thing around thinking I'm going to be enticed by it. It's not, it's not that serious. And so, you know, meeting, especially I'm 39, but meeting men over 40, they are worse than the 25 year olds in mm. some ways in regards to how thirsty they seem yes. for, yeah. you know, are you a virgin, sir? And if you are, that's another conversation to have. And it might be a point of <laughs> where we could have some, some great discussion, a great, you know, Break it, a breakdown of, of what that means and why you're still there at 40 years old. However, you being just, I mean, just a, a true hunger for what you've never had from me specifically is annoying. Again, you can get penis anywhere. I want you to bring something else to the table. And I'm sure for, you know, men like, you know, a lot of men talk about, well, we got to be attracted first, which we don't, we don't got to be attracted. I don't want to have to desire you sexually. It's a hundred percent a part of it for us too. It's just not the totality of how we it's not what drives us if we're really looking for a relationship. Yes, you're attractive. That's why I swiped right, right or left. That's why I engaged in conversation in the chat, et cetera. But it's not the totality of why I'm trying to get to know you because attraction can come from anything. And then if you're a good enough man, you may not have had whatever it is I thought I wanted height wise or, you know, whatever. But if you're a dope individual that pulls me in and then you become a, you're Idris Elba in my eyes. And then nobody, if you, Get away from my man. That's my man. Get away. And I'm going to, you know, send up the, set up the guard dog. So I'm like, mm -mm, you're going to want him. I know he's amazing. Blah, 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 blah. But I think we are, I feel like our views are always so lopsided and they never really match up to how, what you actually really want in the end. You want somebody stable. You want somebody honest. You want somebody kind. You want somebody that's willing to go the long haul with you. And I don't think that, I feel like we let so many other things happen before that about financial status looks how will how quick we're willing to give up sex and all the other stuff and i think it takes away from us actually really getting to connect with somebody mm. i, I want to piggyback on something you said just a few moments ago about <clears throat> when you all were young girls little girls you all were taught to respect the temple to protect the temple right mm -hmm. us guys we were taught or you know guys like myself maybe rj and mario i can't speak on behalf of every guy but i know coming up in a Christian family, I was taught to not have sex until you get married. But then I had fellas. Some fellas tell me, hey, Sean, whatever you do, when you go in on a woman or when it goes down, make sure you wrap it up. Make sure you wear a condom section. One of the two. Either wrap it up or wait until you get married. And so we were taught so many different things coming up in our adolescent stages all the way up to adulthood. It could kind of somewhat be confusing at times because you're taught one thing and then you taught another thing. And then, you know, that whole curiosity kills the cat. And if you get older, you'd be like, I know I was taught to wait until marriage. Now I know I was taught to be celibate. 
but I, I'm just curious to know what it feels like before I get married. Because there may be a situation where, you know, you get with somebody and you still want to wait until you get married or what have you. You get with somebody, this person is the one, treat you with respect, treat you with kindness, all type of things, right? But you may not know how they put it down in the bedroom until you all get married. And I've heard stories <laughs> <laughs> of, uh, yeah, I waited, for, I waited five, six years. And then once we got into the bedroom, it wasn't what I thought it would be. Mm. Tragedy. <laughs> well, make Tragedy. it what you want it to be then. Make it what you want it to be. There are there are tools that can be utilized to enhance one's experience if if the participants are open to it. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. Some people are stuck in their ways. And you can be the most open and say, hey, I want to help you get to where I'm at. I want to, we let's explore together. And some people, be, be, uh, like she said, have been taught by certain people that you don't do this, you don't, don't do that. And there's no taking them out of that that mode in that moment. What do you do when, when, when you run into that situation? You just stuck because they refuse to, you know, open up. Well, then you go open up somewhere else you go open just up like somewhere that. else while you are <laughs> legally married Stop. Yep. that's what i don't like just like that yep. just like that just, but just you go. make sure you let them know hey um you're not willing to open up i don't want to leave you but i can i go open up somewhere so you <laughs> so you're basically asking that person hey can i be an f boy or can i be an no, f girl no because no. f don't ask they just, they just do that See, I'm being respectful. I'm, I'm coming to you. I'm communicating. I'm saying, look, I love you, baby. I ain't going nowhere. But mm -hmm. you, you, you are uncomfortable in this area. And it looked like you ain't never going to get comfortable. And I'm unhappy. And uh, it ain't working in this area. Now, I don't want to leave you. But I'm, I, can I go out and open up with somebody? And what if that person <laughs> says no? What if that person says no? Well, they were fully warned, and I had communication. <laughs> now, if that situation were flipped around, and that was a, a a man coming, you know, that wouldn't work. You you wouldn't like that if somebody came and said that to you, because you'd be feeling like, "What did I not do? Y'all might as well just break up." That that's not a that that environment is gonna become. To each his own, brother. To each his own. <laughs> she said what she said. So it's, <laughs> it's gonna um, become toxic after after a while. No, because this is the thing for me. I ain't gonna have that question. Okay, I know this from experience. I ain't gonna have that question. Ain't no man finna be. They they don't ask that question with me because I I know how to take care of my man. However, I do understand that there are people that aren't as open minded, aren't as welcoming to certain things. Now we can come to an understanding, and sometimes we learn that that person is not like me in that area. And we knew this before we got, even if the person is a virgin, you can tell that that person gonna be about some type of stuff. Cause some virgins, they go, they, they do a lot of things. I know, cause I, I started out late in life. I did a lot of things before I got that, uh, the wood, you know what I'm saying? You know, I experimented. And so you will know where they gonna be at once they get, once they, but if they all dry and they ain't even willing to do nothing beforehand, a little touch, a little, you know, a little something, some little licks, little finger playing, none of that, man, come on, that's your fault. Let me tell you how much, let me tell you how much I am of a nice guy and why I feel like women out there, and uh, let me just say the women that are out there that are passing up on good, nice guys, okay? Let me tell you how much of a nice guy I am. I told my ex when we were going through our stuff that if anything was to happen to you, you may have been handicapped, you may have gotten cancer, whatever. I would never, ever, ever leave you, nor have sex with anybody else. Not only that, I was a nice guy. 
Mm-hmm. But that I sh- that's how much I showed her that I was really, really in love with her. You shouldn't have said and a lot of I wouldn't have said that. Mm-hmm. You would have not said that. Mm-hmm. Even if I would have felt that, I wouldn't have said that. Mm-mm. But that's but, but, um, you, it sounds that great. depends on the individual. That's you, Star. Yeah. Because I'm personally, I'm about a principal person, period. Like I, I don't the concept of that you just are, you know animalistically can't control yourself is I don't really do well with um it's kind of a little bit like Jessica said it's all a decision the choice it's not like I gotta do it so that's what happened no so so if you can control yourself and you've decided to have the principle of you want your you are committing your body to a particular person no matter what then that's great that you have that constitution I think it's beautiful as well but I wouldn't go as far as to say that why what 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 is the fear of when you say it i guess it's not for me it's not a fear well I, i'll say this it depends on who i am with you know how mm. i express myself because i can very well be feeling a lot of different things but um like like okay i'll give an example i was in a relationship for eight years after learning him and and knowing how he receives information and uh what love looks like to him i felt like i could die for him like i would i would do anything for him and um but at a certain point i didn't express that and not because i was afraid but also because i realized he didn't receive the words he me speaking that meant nothing to him he that was in his language if that makes sense yeah so so that's a specific situation that makes sense i guess but you in recommending that someone not say it that felt it i guess i'm just trying to get at what would be the reason in your case it was because it wouldn't have made any difference in your estimation yeah it wouldn't help you but in, in in the case of the brother here, he's saying, he said it, and you're saying that's probably bad. I just want to, I'd like to dig a little deeper with that. because that's the it was bad. I didn't say it was bad. I said, I wouldn't have said that. I right. wouldn't so, That's all I said. But, but so he was with somebody different than the and guy you were with eight years it didn't years matter ago. because he says she's an ex. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the point to get to. That's why she asked because he said that. That's what I was trying to get to. Is that, oh, is that what oh saying? okay, okay. He went too far. He gave her too much information because that's generally what nice guys like to say. Oh, I was so yeah. nice. That's why I lost. That's why this. And that's what I'm trying to see if that was what the what? indication was. Oh, that. You, so you saying what I just said is probably the reason why she went stage left. Well, Maybe that was a part of it. Maybe part that was a part it. of it. I guess is what I was asking. I don't Uh, know. It's what I was asking. That was why he maybe shouldn't have said it because. Because I was in the moment. I was, I was in the moment. I was being sentimental. I don't, I I, I don't, I think. See, this this is the thing that confuses me. This is the thing that confuses me when it comes to communication between men and women. You, women want to hear what they want to hear. Right. And they, we tell you all the truth. We tell you all the truth. Like, like Star said, like Star said in the season finale, just be direct. Yeah. We are direct. No. <laughs> we tell you. I told we you are direct. direct. And no, no, you weren't even no. in the okay, last so, episode. So bring some clarity to the table then, Star. What 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 are we doing wrong? Sean, I done told you this 50 million, 11, 50 million, 11 times now. Is that how many times? Not being direct, you are not being direct. Sean, on, on, okay, on one of, what episode was that? Me and Sean went back and forth and we played it out, right? Like, you know, him talking to me, being direct and me receiving it. And he was just like, the example we had was, um, when a woman says that she's busy, right? Mm. And um, she could very well be busy and mm. we prioritize different than men. Shit, if we got other things to deal with, you, 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 you're you, gonna be in the lineup, okay? Accordingly to what is primary to us. Now we might be interested in you. However, if we have maybe our kids to deal with or something already set up I'm not going to stop what I'm doing just to appease to you so Sean was saying oh well maybe 
you know, it might be something else. She might be busy with a man. And I said, well, won't you just ask her if she's occupied by a man? So we're playing it out. And Sean is on there talking about, uh, oh, so I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. And here goes Sean. Well, um, you got something you want to tell me? <laughs> no, that ain't direct. That's not how I it's said not. it. It's <laughs> not. That's not how Sean How said you said it, it Sean. Tell, tell said, me how you Come on, come on. Hey, you know, what's come on, on your mind? Talk to me. Please what's play. going on? What's on your mind? No, that's not direct. I'm busy. That, that's not direct. No. So, what's the question you really want to answer? Question. What's the question you really want the answer to? What you what, doing? What, <laughs> what, what was the question you really wanted the answer to? The, I, I just asked, what's on your mind? Talk to me. What's going on? That's, what what were what no, she's asking you what exactly did you want to know? And we knew exactly what you wanted to know. What, so what's what, going what, through your mind because of the cadence in your phone? Like I can tell you have a certain <gasps> cadence in, in your tone when you talk to Sean Garvey. I can already tell, like, okay, something's going on. Like I'm I'm 37. <laughs> so I have mastered in the art of communication with people that people's cadence and tone switches up because of something that they are not telling me. But you, you no, we had two scenarios. And remember DJ Rose okay. was saying that you, when the person, the woman says that she's busy, there mm -hmm. may be another man. And I was telling you that you literally have to ask that question. Don't beat around it talking about what's on your mind, what's going on. You you know, you so, got- So what am I supposed to say then? Me. So what am I supposed to say? Is another man occupying your time? Are you busy? Okay. And, and if, we, if we ask that question, if we ask that question, because I've asked women that in the past, you know what they asked me? Well, Sean, why would you ask me a question like that? You get in defense mode. <laughs> Go and keep asking the damn question. Is that you? They get in defense no, mode. Because that's a yes no, or no. Question. That's that's some high school stuff. We're not doing that. No, 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 no. What <laughs> I'm not, not doing that. to her. It's a straightforward question. We're not high school. But, but but why would you assume that somebody is with another man or woman? That's bad manifestation. Of, why that's would why, you assume but that? See, Melinda, that's why I asked. What's on your mind? Talk to me. But I what you really want to know? What you want to know is what are you busy doing? That's what you want to know. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm a, I'm a person that will ask that. Mario, question. come in, man. Mario, that's, come in. I, I, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah, thank you. What are you busy doing? Good. Wait, Mario, come. Are you there? I'm saying that's what I would ask. I'm here. Oh. He's breaking out. Yeah, Mario going in and out. He asked you can't what, hear me? what are you busy doing. Mario asked the question, what are you busy Okay, he's gonna come back on. What Mario asked the question, what are you busy doing? Yeah, that's the question. That's what you really want to ask. Okay, so, and your response would be what? It depends on how I feel about you, to be honest with you. Like if you're if you're somebody that uh, deserves a, a you know that type of depth of information, I'm probably gonna tell you. I'm more of an open book, so I'm probably but if you're somebody that's annoying and ridiculous, and mm. then I may give you more deflection, which is more of an indication than don't ask me nothing because I really don't want to talk to you. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just straight simple. From the gate, let's just be real. Let's just ask each other. Are you ready for a relationship? Yes or no? Are you ready to go on a, are you ready to date? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Are you, are you, um, are you more of a communicator via phone or text? Yes or no? Mm-hmm. Just and those get, questions from the gate. From from the gate. Yep. From the that gate. Does. Don't switch yep. up. Don't switch up as we go along. Don't be like, oh yeah, I'm ready to date. I'm ready to be serious. Da, da, da. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's do it. And then down they the didn't, but that person didn't say they were ready to date you and be serious with you. So there is another element to it. <laughs> right? Like, so so that could be true. <laughs> <laughs> right and then you get to the intangible part i'm not just ready to date anybody i'm not just ready to be serious with anybody right so there, there are some yes or no's and prerequisites to see if we're in the same space head space but then there's the 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 um you know the chemistry piece which is different from that yeah that is definitely true sean and i hope you receive that information <laughs> all i'm saying is all i'm saying is star is that in general people change up people change their minds all the time I'm not just saying just on women i'm saying on dudes too because there are dudes f boys out there that do the same thing they say oh yeah i want to date you i want to be with you i want to be with you and they change up 
Well, if you're changing your mind, you have the free will to do so. Yeah, as long as you're leaving from the beginning, then that's different. But if somebody starts to date you and they start to see that, hey, you know, mm -mm, mm -mm, you ain't supposed to be you, then they have the entitled to change their mind. And they should say that instead of continuing to um, take part in the parts that they like and have no intention then at that point to do the other thing. That's That's where the issue is. Yeah, I'm going to say communication. That's all yeah, I'm saying. I agree. People are just communication. Yeah, but I mean, I agree. I agree with Star. You're going to, I mean, more often than not, you don't change your mind or else you, every single person you've ever met, you would be with, that would be your person. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're in the dating process, more often than not, it's not going to be the one person if that's what, you know. So you got to have the latitude to change on both sides. And the it's issue okay, is what and it's okay it's okay yeah. it's okay but, i mean if you but yeah it's okay if you yeah you're right you have free will to change your mind and switch up and what have you but then that lets me know that you're not ready to take it to the next level yeah and then you're not ready and you get the going you get the moving on that helps you make your next decision correct yeah don't dwell in it I it may be hard you. but you got to do it just move on. You know what? You, yeah, I was feeling her. I like her. We was vibing, but she's not where she's not there. Don't force it. Um, just move on. I learned a long time to start listening to what men say. <laughs> okay, if he said he ain't ready to commit, even though he's doing committed things and he's acting like you're in a relationship and doing relationship things, if he says out of his mouth, I ain't there yet, I ain't ready. He ain't ready. So you move on and you do not continue to do those relationship things with a man that's not ready because he gonna do those relationship things, but that doesn't mean that he wants to commit to you fully and solely. So you just gotta listen to what they say and take it for what it is and move on. I said in the last episode, when a man show you who they are, you believe them. Yeah, I believe that's all people. That's that's all right, that's all people. That's my Angelou, all people. Yeah, <laughs> believe yeah. them, believe them. Yes, you yes. got to, you got to. I got a question, y'all. I'm gonna ask y'all this question, right? So I went on, I went on a, a few dates with this guy, right? I met him offline, went on dates, we're cool. Was it couple, right? Was it couple? Was it a couple? Was it couple? The, the couple. Site. Com. Oh hell no, it wasn't couple yet. But I'm gonna go on there, <laughs> and I'm gonna go off there too. <laughs> I'm just, but I'm excited to go on couples.com. Uh, Do you hear me? But uh, no, it was Tinder. And um, I had had some past experience on, on Tinder and I just got off of it. And then I went back on it because I was bored. And so I just, you know, was swiping right and swiping left. And then I got like, you know, I saw something that I was like, ooh, and you know, we kind of connected and then we went on our first date. And then we went on another, like went on another date and another date now. now we're cool or whatever we even started like working out together just kind of like really vibing or whatnot Mm -hmm. and then he calls me up one day and he asked me now before i even get there you know people have pets they love their pets you know they treat their pets like children and all of these things right and so he calls me up one day and asked me can i watch his cat for three days wait 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 wait. he said watch his cat or watch? Cat sit. Cat okay. sit. Okay. Cat, cat sit. Like babysit his cat. And from <laughs> what I've known from him, he loves this cat. This cat is like his child. Like, you know, like everything. Like, mm. and I'm just like, me and you ain't even known each other a good two weeks. And you're asking me to child sit. I... Mm. I, I don't know how to take that because I immediately asked him, I was like, I I don't know how to feel. Should I feel flattered that you're asking me to watch your child? Because, you know, I know you have friends. I know you have other people and you feel that comfortable with me. Like, you what do you say? He was like, yeah, he said from, well, from my experience and stuff, you seem pretty responsible and dependable. And I said, or is it you asked everybody that you could ask 
then you ask me last, like, you know, well, shit, I'm all out of action. Let me just throw it out at her, which even is even more bad because I'm like a stranger watching your child, but whatever. And he just kind of laughed that off. And for me, you laugh it off. I'm thinking, okay, that must have been it. Like, you, you know, I was at the bottom of the totem belt and you, you just kind of like, ooh, ding, ding, right? And, you know, he was just like, his initial answer was he thought I was responsible and um, he felt like my cat, his cat would be safe with me and I would take care of the cat and not harm the cat. But mm. my feelings is, I don't know you, you don't know me. I have a daughter. I'm not just going to let some dude I started dating hold my daughter and be like, hey, can you watch it for three days? And these people love their pets. They they love them. They, you know, they got pets got their own room. They got a veterinarian doctor. They take them out on trips and vacations. Mm. And a, so mm. for you to love your pet that much mm. and put them in my hands, I don't, I don't know, y'all. That I'm I'm what y'all think? You don't want to deal with that cat litter. You don't want to deal, <laughs> you don't want to deal with the uh <laughs> the work. Those spoiled ass cat. This is, cat was Mark. spoiled anyway. You don't want no spoiled. But is the issue that is? Are you questioning the the authenticity of his uh, proclaimed trust? Like I don't know if you're really authentic with that, or is it that he's too early, too fast? Trusting you with anything. I'm you know? questioning his decision making at this point. You know, to act a stranger to watch your cat. Well, well how long have y'all known each other? Less than two weeks. Two weeks. She said two weeks. About two weeks. Less, less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's really soon. Too. And we went on three dates, and we worked out twice. So I guess we could say five dates because we worked out twice together. Yeah. Hey. Hey, yeah, I put a lot of time and effort in those three weeks. Two, three weeks. Jeez. And enough and already to he's set your cat. <sighs> Thank I'm you. just asking because maybe I'm, you know, I might be wrong. You know, I might be I don't wrong. know. I mean, I could see if he asked you, hey, I want you to meet my mother. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be a little bit more over the top. Not maybe, but that's that's over the top versus, hey, can you watch my cat? Can you cat sit? Okay. So I don't okay. know. You're saying that I should make a big deal out of it. I think it's a little relaxed, in my opinion. Um because next thing you'd be like, hey, could you come on? Would you mind coming over and cleaning up my house? Or, you know, I feel like he's getting really comfortable really soon. Uh, that That's yeah. my initial thought. Like, that's really, really familiar and comfortable. Because again, even though it's just the cat, it's still a cat. It's something that he values, but it's kind of like something off his short wheel that he's handing over. Like, hey, do this for me real quick for three days while I'm out of town. You don't know me from Adam, I could be a cat killer. <laughs> well, have, I mean, have you expressed? Yeah, so, your, have, I don't know. Have you expressed a love for like cats too? Like sometimes people are like that. They're like, "Oh my god, that's all you guys have talked about is cats, and you have cats too." And that would change the context, I think, if it was like that. <laughs> and and then for me, I don't have no pets. I ain't had no pets since I was little. Like I don't know how to damn watch a damn pet. And and the crazy thing was, I told him I was like, "Well, you know, I don't, I don't have no pets." I, I don't know the first thing about goddamn watching the bed. Like, you know, like, and he was like, yeah, you know, but I mean, I think you're responsible. And, and I was just like, uh. no, nah, that's too comfortable too soon. He's trying to, nah, next is going to be clean up my apartment. I, I would say, I would say, from, I would say if I'm a cat owner and I don't have anybody to watch my cat, but I know you with whether it's in a short amount of days or months or whatever, I probably would consider that like, hey, can you watch my cat in, in, in exchange? Can I wash your car? Like, let me do something for you if you watch my cat. Like, let me wash your car. Let me cook for you for a week or two. Like, let, or let me come by your place and see if there's anything that needs to be fixed, the electricity or whatever. Like, let me do something for you if, you know, you do something for me. Or he could call Petco and send yeah. his cat. Yeah, you know. To, to the overnight kennel situation. Yeah. <laughs> I think a cat is different from an there are solutions. watching a car. Especially if you're in love with your cat like that. Like you consider it like 
your child, you know, because some people don't have kids and they consider their pets their children because they don't. Have, if you considering this cat like your child and you letting a stranger watch your child, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. And I don't know which way to go with that because I thought, you know, it was working, you know, but now I'm just like, maybe you're not making the right choices in life, asking me to watch your children and you don't know me. Mm. Well, follow your gut and intuition. So no first and then see what happens. Yeah. I just say just say I'm busy, just like you tell the other guys. <laughs> just like you told me, I'm busy. Right. Cause what would he have done too? Oh, you throwing shade. You throwing shade before y'all met, huh? <laughs> What'd you say? What would he have done two weeks before you met? God. What would he have done two weeks ago before y'all met? Right, like right, like what? I mean, come on. I know I'm fabulous. I know I'm lovable. I know I'm, you know, dependable. All of this, but uh, uh-uh, uh, honey, you had friends before me and other strangers before me. Okay. <laughs> Why you ain't ask them? Mm-mm, that's weird. Yeah. Right. No. Allergic and to cats. No. I don't know, Star. <laughs> and no. There are people that are allergic to cats. <laughs> the, but yeah, like maybe, maybe. none of those questions were asked. <laughs> but that's true. I mean, I would ask a woman, hey, are you allergic to cats? Are you allergic to dogs and type of pets? He did say this. He did say, so how do you feel about pets? And I was like, whenever I, somebody asks, you know, whenever somebody asks that question, the answer is, let me guess, you already have a pet, right? I ain't got no yeah. pet. No, no, no. I'm saying when somebody That's asks answer, me a question saying. like that, I automatically assume that you have a pet. You, you are. A right. Pet. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is not an answer to the questions. You need to practice being direct. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying rhetorically I'm already assuming that you have a pet when you ask me that question they may have I mean, one of course I'm gonna one. say of course I'm gonna be like oh how do I feel about pets uh you know I like certain type of pets or what have you but I don't like all pets you know but in my mind I'm like okay you already know you you own a pet that's what I'm thinking in my mind they may just want one I know people who really don't have pets but they really want them so they might care if somebody else wanted them too i guess we thinking about pets like children these days i guess that's how we that's what's out here in these streets so it's kind of like do you ever want children kind of question how right do you pets? right and maybe it's a test maybe he's trying to test it could be a test that's what i was thinking could be a test and he's trying to see what you going how you gonna Ooh. yeah like if she can take care of my pet you know <laughs> take it to the next step you know what i'm saying <laughs> I was going to go there, but I didn't want to because I, I feel like I'm the only guy in one here now. But <laughs> <laughs> Take it there, Sean. It's okay. We ain't going to pack you or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but the cat don't bite. The cat don't bite. No. I mean, it's like a really cute, <laughs> fuzzy cat. It is adorable, but I mean, still. Well, I got a different question because I'm just curious now. I mean, and I could just be stereotypical, I guess, but I've never met a man that had a cat that that had a period. I could I could put a period right there, but that treated that pet like an animal. <laughs> I mean, like a, a child. So it, what kind of, I mean, for so real? He, yeah, yeah, girl. <laughs> so look, he has a cat and a dog. Oh, okay. So he oh, has yeah, Brandon Stephen. Okay. Gotcha. He has two pets. He has no children. You know, he's one of those workaholic people don't have time to date. Cause you know, we get a lot of people online that don't have time to really date. So they go online mm-hmm. dating mm-hmm. and um, well, to find a date, to find outside of work because of the time. And so for him, I think when he decided to get these pets because he can have something to come home to, he's not lonely, you know, you know, um, and now he's building attachment. Like I know a lot of people do to their pets now. I, I don't, I don't know, but a lot of people are very attached to their pets. And so he like attached to these pets, like, you know, they're his children, they're a part of his family and his life and all of that. And he made that kind of very clear when we first started dating in a sense, like he would always talk about them and call me on video with the cat in his hand mm. and then, mm. 
you know, just not video with the cat. Yeah, the cat was in the video. That's, you that's know? too much. But that is that is a nice balance, and he has a cat in it though. Right, that shows he has balance. Cat he has really most video. men don't have that. But the video, shit, he took it too far with the video, um, girl. He took it too far with the video. No, he, he called me to on. meet the cat. He he called nah. me the video. He wanted me to meet the cat and the dog on video. Nah, that's what that's what you're doing. That's <laughs> you gotta, mm, mm. come on now, Jessica. Help me. What you think? I do know some cat dads, you know, mm. black, a lot of black men are like actual cat dads, which is interesting. And it's something I hadn't seen in like the past, I want to say maybe three to five years. Cause I was just like, oh, okay. Like, no, nah, cats is better. Cause da, da, da. And they have these full arguments. I do feel, I do feel like maybe his attachment to them is like his way, like Sean said, of like getting to know you through them. Like what's your reaction? Don't you think they're cute? Da, 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 da. Like I, I'm trying to get into his mindset or psyche mm -hmm. to understand where he's coming from. But again, I do feel like this is too soon because it'll just be again like, "Hey, watch my kids for me real quick. I'll be back. I'll be back in three days." Excuse? No, because I don't know you. You could be a cat abuser. Anything mm -hmm. I don't know, and so I would take it just because again, even if it's not a human child, it is something that's connected to me. I would want to hit up somebody I could actually sue for real, like Petco or you know the little kittens and mittens boarding house or whatever it is pay that money bro right they need to be able to uh go somewhere where i can't be able to hey this and this happened not i'm this girl i met only met her two weeks ago how shabby is that argument i'm thinking that far ahead if you decide to go sue her later how shabby is that argument you only met her two weeks ago you let her watch your cat did she say she was a cat enthusiast did she go to you know did she dress up as a furry does she know you know all these other <laughs> things about cats blah 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 but I think he's trying to weave her into his life early. <laughs> and then, and then, then it'll be, then they can tell these cute stories about, yeah, I knew she was the one because she watched my cat after two weeks. That's cute and all. But if she's not a cat person, I feel like that's too far. Call your mom. Call your auntie. That's a cat lady. Call, call your kid. anybody. Don't call Don't me. <laughs> anybody. Like you said, call your other strangers. You say your other strangers. You got other strangers. <laughs> I see, you know. So I guess. I don't oh man, know. I'm glad I don't want to about it. You said you glad you don't have a cat. <laughs> I, 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 hey, the only cat I want to see is. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Okay, Sean. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's got fresh all of a sudden. Okay. Oh man, it's the Be Break Morning Show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I see I'm the only guy now in this room here, but we're getting ready to wrap up this uh, great bonus episode of the Beat Break Morning Show. All right, so I got an announcement, a quick announcement I got to make. I got to switch up the beat for this one. So Star, Star Kells. Yes, sir. So I, I, I shared this announcement to you and a few others from Beat Break Radio. I'm trying to find the right instrumental to, I think we go with this one right here. Come and celebrate, yeah. I told you all offline about some moves that the Beat Break Morning Show is getting ready to make, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, we've been rocking out for 11 years with the morning show. You have been with us through all the great moments, the crazy moments since 2010 from one AM station to another, from one internet platform to another. We have covered a lot of great interviews, a lot of great people in studio via Zoom, via phone call, all that great stuff. Been nominated for ATS Hottest Awards nominee eight, nine, 10 times. Just haven't kept count, sorry. <laughs> Acknowledging a few magazine, newspapers, and all that great stuff. Still consistent, still rocking on. But I am happy to announce that starting October 4th, we are going to be syndicated, the Beat Break Morning Show, we're going to be syndicated on 101 The Vibe FM in Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky, to be exact. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, man. Shout outs to the shout outs to the big hit honcho there at 101 the Vibe FM in Louisville, Kentucky, Charles King, 
for opening the door to us to expand the morning show over there. And we are also in talk with a few other platforms that are looking to pick us up. I won't give all the details right now, but you just got to make sure you follow us on all social media at Beat Break Radio, Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram for complete updates. But yes, yeah, starting October 4th from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., we are going to be simulcasting on 101 The Vibe FM in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, so shout out to all my people out there in Kentucky. We're getting ready to make Louisville, Kentucky, and just the entire state of Kentucky, our new home. You awesome. finna light it up. Awesome. We're gonna burn it up. Tear it up. <laughs> yeah, man. We all looking forward to it. Myself, DJ Rollum, Star, the whole crew, the morning show crew. Yeah, indeed, indeed, man. So I'm happy. I'm happy we're only uh, weeks away from October. And uh, like I mentioned, folks, the new season of the Beat Break Morning Show is coming October 4th. Uh, we are just around the corner for that. So please feel free to send all your well wishes to beatbreakradio at gmail.com or reach one communications at gmail.com. Or you can just shoot me a DM at Sean Garvey on Facebook, Sean Garvey ATL on Twitter and on Instagram. Hey, Star, where can people follow you at? People can follow me at She Talk Atlanta on Facebook and Instagram. And make sure you guys check out my She Talk Atlanta group on Facebook. We are lit and we be live. Join me. <laughs> lit. All right. Also, big shout outs to Ryan Biswick. I'm sorry, Biswick. I'm sorry. Ryan Biswick from Couple, the CEO of Couple, for joining in on the morning show. Hey, you all be on the lookout for amazing events that is coming um, their way. Couple.com is the website. If you want more information, the online virtual speed dating platform that is available. Um, they will be back up and running in just a few days. I see you shaking your head there, Melinda. Like, oh, okay. This is interesting. <laughs> online speed dating. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I will check it out. I will check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come across no F boys on there. I'm sure there will be, unless they have some type of F boy, uh, you filter. know, filter, you know, <laughs> algorithm, right. weed out algorithm. Yeah, yeah, man. All right. Uh, but yeah, big shout outs to a uh, couple. We definitely will have them back on. You know, we're going to try to do some things with them in the near future. So just uh, keep it locked here to the Beat Break Morning Show. All right. Uh, shout out to DJ Rollum, uh, who couldn't make it today, but he will be back with us on the season premiere of the Beat Break Morning Show, all right? And uh, once again, folks, we are simulcasting on thinkingoutloudnetwork.com, thinkingoutloudnetwork.com. Don't forget to download the podcast FM app to your mobile device. We are available everywhere, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram, all right? So this has been the Beat Break Morning Show, the Beat Break Podcast. I'm casting on thinkingoutloudnetwork.com. Was there anything else I left out? Yeah. Ask, let the ladies, let, let the people know how they can follow these beautiful, lovely ladies on here. Melinda says she don't want to be followed. Um, I, I, <laughs> I actually represent Mental Massage right now on this platform, right? So uh, Mental Massage is a... Um, self-care, mind, body, soul service for women leading organizations, businesses, and infants households. So my first visit, my first round to the Be Break Morning Show was about that, right? Mental health, uh, self-care. And so I am always inviting folks to take a look, take a um, drive by www.mentalmassagewellness.com mentalmassagewellness.com or mental massage wellness on Facebook or Instagram. All right. And also shout out to SL Shanta Hayes for always marketing and promoting mental massage and all the other endeavors. You make sure you all check them out also. And uh Jess, do you want to be following on social media? Absolutely. We just want to make sure you you want we want to make sure that we protect you from all the F boys that are out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. And maybe some um, F girls that try to get I'll let you too with me. <laughs> I am a, um, a soon to be podcaster. I did have an internet radio show called Jesting and Things and my podcast, which is coming up in September, uh, we will be relaunching. And currently you can check out us on Spotify and catch all our old episodes, amazing R&B music, all from the B side of this, uh, the, uh, you know, 
of each record that I choose. You know, we got some good prints. We got PJ Morgan. We got all the things. Uh, but it's Jesting and Things. So you can follow me there and Instagram. So it's J E S T I N G and Things one on Instagram. Uh, and Jesting and Things on Facebook, and look for me on Spotify, Jesting and Things. And we'll be back up September, rocking and rolling, doing all the things, podcasting and all the good stuff, and lots of great panel discussions, open discussions about great stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. So y'all join me. Okay. Well, well hey, can we join you too? Can we do a... Absolutely. A Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I would love that. And I also want to check out Mental Massage. That sounds amazing. I don't know all the details, but I'm definitely going to be checking that out. Yeah, y'all got a network. Y'all got a network. Absolutely. Yeah. They got some great things happening. All right. And uh, also, somebody hit me up. <laughs> somebody said, shout out to all the cat mothers out there, the cat women, the cat mothers out there, since y'all want to talk about cats. <laughs> not, just, not just the cat daddies. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that Melinda said that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Shout, out, shout out to all the cat mothers, cat women out there. Yeah. All right, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Beat Break Morning Show, the Beat Break Podcast. Y'all keep it locked. It's the Beat Break Morning Show with Sean Garvey and the crew.